Hey guys, so I just got back from the department store and I wanted to show you my haul. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, I figured I'd show you some of the stuff I got in the mail today uh, that's pretty darn neat. Uh, let's take a look at them. These two things I got in the mail from a fellow head fire. I decided to trade my hi fi, excuse me, my Woo Audio WA6 uh, that I very much love but honestly no longer need since I've moved uh, almost entirely to my other headphone amplifier. Uh, he sent me a pair of the Hi-Fi Man HE400s, which I don't even know if you guys remember, but I had these about three years ago. They're awesome cans. Um, they don't have the most stellar uh, ear pads. They're velvet, and I don't love that, but they do offer leather ones I'll probably have to buy and pick up. But these are really, really great uh, headphones that, uh, that I recall very much liking, and I'll have to revisit them and see what I think about them. But the main reason I accepted to do this trade was because of these. These are the Mr. Speaker's Alpha Dog Prime. Now, these are a Fostex uh, headphone that's been totally revamped from the ground up. Um, they reconfigure the driver. They put them in different uh, cups. These are 3D printed ear cups, interestingly enough. They don't look 3D printed at all because the gloss on that is insane. They're hand painted. Really, really incredible headphones, and they're supposed to sound amazing. Not to mention these ear cups are super, super soft. So I'm excited to get a closer look at these. I've never listened to them before. I've just heard rave reviews. They're not very cheap. They're about $600, uh, if memory serves me correctly, which is kind of ironic, seeing as though it's basically a reshelled version of a $150 headphone. But nonetheless, I'm excited to try them out. One other thing I got in a separate package, I actually bought this uh, from a company called the Audio Guild. This is a Q cable. It is a cable for my Odyssey LCD3s. Now, a lot of people who are high on crack and cocaine will start telling you why uh, audio cables are so important, why you need to spend hundreds of dollars on audio cables. And it's, uh, it's pretty much all BS. Um, I don't want to say that you know, the quality of cables is not important because you do need a cable with a pretty low resistance and, and you know, quite a bit of um, a purity, but not, not even so much purity. It's rather the strand count that's, that's important. Uh, but resistance is, is the main issue. And you can get a really, really great sounding headphone cable for $15. I mean, there's not much difference between a $15 and a $15,000 cable. Um, even though people will, and marketing especially, will lead you to believe that there is. But I bought this from Steve Eddy from the Audio Guild for two reasons. One, he doesn't market it like it's fetching, you know, better than sliced bread. He just says it's a really nice cable, and uh, it, it is. And it's not so much even because of the, the quality of the, the wiring or what have you, even though it is a really, really nice cable. But it's just that it has this silk cable that is so, so, I don't know if you can see, it is like the softest cable I've ever felt. It's like really, really weird. Um, it's so nice. And so that's why I got it, because I'm going to be doing extended listening. I really don't like the Odyssey cable that I have right now. So I figured I'd pick this one up. It was about a $250, I think, so it's not cheap, but they're all hand braided. And uh, he even wraps the, the cables, uh, well, the, you know, the copper cables in um, silk on the outside, and, and I'm sure that takes hours because um, he does it all by hand. So they're really, really beautiful cables. Again, not for everyone at all. Um, in fact, not even really for me because to be 100% honest, um, I'm not even super, uh, I can't really talk about the, uh, the cable uh, industry because it's not my field. I don't really have that much interest in it. All I do know is that the majority is marketing BS. And the reason I bought this one, even though it's still $250, is because Steve is a super nice, straight up guy who doesn't try to sell you BS, which I really am fond of. And the last one, I already opened that. This is like a very, sounds like I'm farting. I promise you I'm not farting. This last one is not what I'm most excited for, but I am very, very excited. This is, Wow, that is like a very, very sturdy box. This is not going to be an easy one-handed unboxing. Is... Good. It is the Meizu MX4 Pro. This is the latest flagship smartphone from the Meizu Chinese manufacturer. Um, many people believe them to be Apple ripoffs. I probably have to agree, but I mean, look at that. That boxing, doesn't that just scream iPad Air to you? <laughs> but uh, we're gonna dive into this because it's supposed to be a really, really cool phone. Um, it has a octa-core uh, Exynos processor from Samsung, three gigs of RAM. It has a, they call it a 2K display. It's actually 
um, better than theoretical 2K. It's better than any of the QHD displays out on the market right now in any smartphone because it uses a weird aspect ratio. It doesn't use a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Rather, I think it's a, a 12 by 9 or no, maybe. It's, it's a much squarer uh, face. And so it's a, I wish I knew the, the, wow, this is like really, really nice packaging. It's all cardboard. You've got here your uh, your charger decharger. This is a two amp charger. Um, obviously it's not gonna work here, but I may get it an adapter because it charges a lot faster than a standard one amp charger. Earphone not included. Apparently I uh, didn't <laughs> get the top of the line version. This is a cable, micro USB. And then this of course is the phone itself. We have MX4 Pro here on the outside. We flip the page, more than better. <laughs> that is totally something Apple would say. Not really great grammar or English, but it's catchy. Um, the fusion of sound and vision. Meizu, if you don't know about them, they were a really, really high quality MP3 manufacturer, uh, MP3 player, and they rivaled the iPod. And their sound quality and amplifiers and digital to analog converters and their stuff has been top notch. So when they moved to smartphones, they kept this mentality of hi-fi audio in mind. And this is supposed to sound incredible. Um, they have a very, very cool uh, Exynos processor, uh, 20 nanometer chip. They have a really, really great fingerprint sensor that people say is the only thing that really comes close to Touch ID and in many cases is better, which is surprising. And then it has the FlyMe 4 OS, which is a very, very heavily skinned version of Android. Um, if we look at the actual phone, you can see it's, it's a little thicker than you know your standard phones. I, I'd relate it to the thickness of the HTC One M8. It's not really thick, but it's certainly thicker than the iPhone 6 or the 6 Plus. There's the camera. It has a 20 megapixel Sony sensor, uh, which is fantastic. It has the dual tone flash as well. The sleep wake button is on top, which I don't like. There's a secondary microphone. There's a microphone on the bottom. Look at that. That screams iPhone, doesn't it? That looks exactly like the Samsung Galaxy S6, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, to to this phone's credit, this was made before the S6. Um, however, after the iPhone, it's been out for about two or three months. There's the micro USB on the bottom. You have your microphone. You have your speakerphone. You have a removable back. The back is plastic. This side frame is metal. Do you know what's stupid about this backpack or this back being plastic is that there's no removable battery, nor is there expandable storage, which is really really lame. So you pull the whole entire back off just to put one SIM card in, and Shame on you, Meizu. That's really just a bummer. So they give you some... Uh-oh, I'm going to drop my iPhone. They give you some tips on how to use the actual device. I don't know if the battery's charged. I'm betting it's not. Oh, got a little vibrate. Oh, there you can see right there. It uses a... It's a 5.5-inch screen. It's a pretty big phone, but it feels smaller. Ironically, even though it's thicker, it feels smaller than the iPhone 6. Not incredibly bright, although this is a pretty anti-reflective little paper here. Get off. One-handed videos are really, really hard. Okay. Wow. That's like a really, really good display. Like really, really good. You can't really see from the Mac on the iPhone, but that is an incredible display. Um, the borders are like non-existent. I love the bezel-less phones. Um, you have a button down here that makes it look like a Galaxy Note of some sort. It's actually a fingerprint scanner, and it's 360 degrees. So like Touch ID, there's no uh, unlike Touch ID, well, like Touch ID, <laughs> unlike the Samsung uh, fingerprint scanner, there's no swipe crap. You can do it from any angle, 360. It can store up to 10 fingerprints, I think, which is pretty cool, better than the iPhones 5 or 6 or whatever it is. And uh, there you have it. It's a remarkable looking phone. I'll do a video on this tomorrow, probably. And uh, we'll go a little more in depth with that. But this is the uh, Meizu MX4 Pro. And that is the other stuff I got in my haul. Thanks for watching. Stay snazzy. You guys are the best. I love you. Goodbye.